seems like nowadays everybody wants to learn how to code and that means that we need people who can teach coding well and rather than just kind of winging it uh, it's good to have some tried and true frameworks and templates and things like that so here's one of them that I found a pretty cool acronym called PRIM, so this is a five-step process to teach coding. I'm going to walk through those steps, and then I have a little demo to show after that. Uh, so the first step, uh, it's an acronym, so you know PRIM, each of those is a step with that respective first letter. Uh, so this is PREDICT. Uh, so first we will show students some part of code, and nobody's going to run anything, right? The students are just going to think about what they expect that code to return. So without running the code, predict what it will do. Okay, so let's go to step two, which is actually going to be to run it. So uh, now what you will have the students do is compare what they thought would be the output versus what the output actually is. So now we get to three here, this is investigate. And here what we wanna do is really understand how we got from that point A to point B really. Uh, tracing through the code, labeling it, commenting things out, having a broad discussion about uh, the code and and how you got from that code to, to that solution. And from there, we will modify. So this is the first two M's in PRIM. Uh, what we'll do with this step is start to modify the working code. So let's say that the, the last example the code was broken in some way, the student learned what made it broken. Now this is going to be time to fix it and also expand on it. So that could be you know, adding a little more um, conditional logic flow, uh, maybe making it more efficient in some way, adding some features or functions to, to the code. So there are a few ways to, to take modifying. And then from there, we can really have the student make something of their own. So using those principles that they learned from the process thus far, they can now take a new problem from scratch and build that code up on their own. So what really makes this a great process is it really walks students through this flowchart. I really like this, that we start with something that's not mine, right? They're, just looking at a piece of code and just kind of looking at it, right? Um, and then they're modifying it. So that's even one of the letters in our acronym. Uh, and then from there, once you start to modify and build on the, the code, you can kind of take it in, into this iterative process like we see in that flowchart there. But gradually over time, the code goes from something that's not mine to mine. And that prim process does a really great job of walking students through that. So I've got an example here in uh, R actually. Let me, all right, I have a demo here. This is using the dplyr grammar of data manipulation in R. Um, so if you're not familiar with that, I'll link to some resources. Very cool tool to learn about. Um, but let's do a prim based exercise here. So again, P is the first part. What do we anticipate when we run this code? Well, let's just look through it and, and take a look. I know dplyr, so I can kind of guess that we have a data frame people. We're going to aggregate it by birth country. Then we're going to take the average height by country and then just sort that list. OK, so let's see if that's actually what happens. Well, I can go ahead and run that and that is not what happened, right? We get an error. So now we want to find out why, right? What what caused this error? Uh, debug this code. Okay, well, I'm not going to go through the whole process, but you know, some of the things we might want to do uh, are, you know, just maybe print out some of the code so we, or some of the data so we know that we're using the right field names and stuff like that. And that part seems okay. Um, and then we would want to, you know, try to isolate each part of the code, make sure that that runs. So that's all part of that investigation, right? Well, let's say that, you know, we're kind of running on our patients and I want to get a hint. I've got a little hint here to take us to the documentation. So there may be a problem with the uh, code that we're using with the functions, right? And look, I've already got it open right here. 
And here are the major grammar verbs in dplyr. The last one here is arrange to change the ordering of the rows. That seems to be what we wanted, not order by. So we were using the wrong function. So let's go back to the example here. And now that we know that, I am going to copy this. And let's fix this up. We don't want order by, we want a range. OK, so we've modified. We've inspected this. We got it to run. OK. Now I've got a second exercise here. So now we're going to get into the, the modify part, right? So I've got the code that works. We know that it's a range and not order by. So now what I want to do is build on top of this. Right, let's say for example, I want to find the minimum height by country instead of the average. And then I want to only include players born after 1985. So this is going to take a little bit of extra work on our part. First thing I'm going to need to do is, and, and again, you know, this assumes a little bit of deep player knowledge, um, but I want to filter where the birth year is greater than. 1985, and then I need to pipe that. And then the other thing we need to do is change the average to a min. So let's make this field make more sense. OK. All right, so that is what we want now. Let's go ahead and run this. Again, you know, if I wasn't really sure, take a hint, get the documentation. And again, this workflow would kind of mimic what it would be like in real life, right? Where, you know, you're working through it, you're trying things out. Eventually, if you want help, the documentation is a good place to start. OK, so let's go ahead and run that. And there we go. We get the answer. So again, we went through that logic where we took something that wasn't ours. that was just kind of placed in front of us, right? And we figured out what was working, what wasn't working and ultimately turned it into something that we were able to build and, and modify on our own. So the next step to this might be taking a totally different data set and then running through a similar little dplyr kind of pipeline like this. So that's how the print method works. Really pretty nifty, I think. Uh, there's a lot that you can do with it. And that was, again, just a little demo. But you know you could use that in a classroom setting, in writing, kind of like we did. Lots of different technologies. I used R, but you know pretty much any programming language you could think of, something like this would work. Um, so I hope you can use that in your teaching, give a little more framework and structure behind how we teach coding. Because again, you know it's very trendy. Everybody wants to learn how to code, but you know if we're not prepared to teach it, then that might not go so well. So thank you very much for watching.